and when you were thinking about Brief Encounter, what made you choose it? Uh, oh, the usual love. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I think I'll always be there. You know, I'm sort of addicted to love. I'm a passionate woman and it's terrible. It's an agonizing, painful, debilitating thing to choose somebody and to make choices over the people you care about. So I think I'm really fascinated by um, the liberating nature of love, but also the trapping nature of love, which is where the two of them trying to express themselves as, in, as individuals within a relationship, which is often what we do. There's fantastic and old coward lines where he says, am I boring you? And she says, no, please talk. And he says, tell me about it. It's, again, it's just those simple things of being listened to and expressing yourself. I read something about Brief Encounter that you believe in some ways that if the story was told now, it would have a very different ending, that there would be a certain liberation in the piece. Yes. In terms of the ending, could you Although, talk a little you know, bit about I that? Still, I still struggle because life keeps teaching you lessons and life doesn't get simpler, it gets more and more complicated. And it, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of people think that Brief Encounter is very much rooted in its time and that now everybody has sex all the time and that there's no morals and that anything goes. And I don't believe that's true. I think maybe society judges people less, but I think the issues are the same, you know, and you the demons of trying to lead a good life and a, a generous life and a loving life still um, wake up and haunt us in the same way. I think I wrestle with what would happen to them now. I think it's certainly in 1938, they were both married and they both had children. I think it was nearly impossible and people do manage to turn their lives around now. I love one of the things that you said that you felt like Laura would have been um, somehow a little bit more liberated in her life and enriched mm. in her life from having had this relationship you know, with Alec. You see, I hope that does come through this this production as well, which is, I think, there is a sense that they're not together at the end, and it, it isn't a happily ever after story, and it never should be, really not what it's about, but I, I really hope that they do find something more in themselves, that there's something bursting out of her in that still life, that still marriage, wasn't able to function. And he goes to Africa, you know, I love the thought that he might do something amazing. Well, one thing I have to say is that, yes, it is so painful and so tragic and everything, but you take us on such a fun journey. I mean, the production is so much fun and mm -hmm. has so much whimsy in it and the music that you bring in and the circus atmosphere and then bringing in the other two couples. Any little fish can swim, any little bird can fly, any little dog or any little cat could do a bit of this and just a bit of that. Any little horse can neigh, any little cow can moo, but I can do anything at all but just love you. Tell me a little bit about the creation of all that in relation well. to the theme of this tragedy. Of the tragic love. Yeah. Well, I'm a great believer that theatre should be a good night out. Now that doesn't mean that it's dumbed down or you know, it's, but you should have a great night out. You should feel alive and changed. You know, I'm passionate about the live experience. I'm passionate that a group of people come into a room and another group of people do something. But I don't think any theatre should be boring. That's my first note to myself is, is it boring? No, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I say that only because, you know, it's probably not a very intellectual choice is that I often think, oh, we could do the song or a dance. You know, I mean, I think that as people, we do like to be entertained and we like to see different things but I also think that Noel Coward wrote this fantastic love letter to love with the three couples you've got the you've got the our central tragic impossible couple and then you've got the young couple that are who who don't know anything apart from the hope of it and the joy of it and then you've got your second time round love your lovely older couple who are finding it for the second time and I just wanted that whole language of love to to bubble through because it's not a star vehicle you know the play was very much a chamber piece and then the film became much more of a star vehicle, as films tend to do. And I really wanted to go back to falling in love with all of them. I'm falling in love with love. I think bringing in the, uh, the band on stage mm -hmm. is also a fantastic surprise. Because the way Nihai works, we're an ensemble of performers and musicians and artists. The thought of having some of your team off to a side somewhere is, I, I can't, Im they're, they're the same as all of us, so uh, the musicians are always on stage in, in my work. Which is something we love. Yeah, well, of course, and then you enjoy it more because you see where it's coming from, whereas if it's a sound, you might as well put on a, a soundtrack, you know, and, and soundtracks people ignore. They just go in somewhere and they, you process right. it through, but when you actually watch somebody play something beautiful on a trumpet, 
or play something that goes wrong, it, it suddenly you go, wow, that's actual skill. It's, it's the delight of, of human brilliance, isn't it? And I love that. As a theatre director, you're, what you're trying to do is to um, communicate with the audience the feelings that you recognise as a human being. And the way to do that isn't through naturalism in my work, because you, again, you can go to the pictures or watch television for that. It's to do with, you know, when they actually fly up into the air, you go, oh, and you suddenly feel a little bit like you do when you're in love, or you, or you laugh at something, or a, a beautiful piece of music breaks your heart, is actually the emotions are uh, travelling in different ways and through different forms. Yeah, and I think, I think one of the things that's also great about this is that you've got that kind of uplift of, let's say, a jug band, and then you've got all that beautiful Rachmaninoff music as well. of the forms that you've got going in there is not easy to pull off. I don't know anyone who can really do it as well as you, actually. Thank you. <laughs> and there's no trick. It's the same thing as not being boring. Is, is it true? Do I recognize it? So all my choices, I try and make quite personal choices. Do they represent how I felt when I've been in love or when I felt moved or when I felt lost? But it's just the alchemy. Hopefully it works. Yeah, and I think alchemy is a really great word for what you create. It's almost like a perfect combination of the fairy tale and the classic love story. It's both. And it's got the elements of both. I think it's for everybody. Me too. <laughs>